On this O-gauge layout, locomotives and rolling stock are controlled by DCC. The locomotive decoders are all sound decoders and many of the coaches have individual compartment lighting. So there's a fair bit of current taken from the DCC circuit. The layout also uses C-bus for everything else, including point switching and lighting. Each light can be individually switched. There's a line side hut, a signal box, yard lamps. On the stations themselves, street lights are separately switched, as indeed are interior lights within the buildings. And platform lights. They are a block light, but nonetheless we can allocate switches to individual platforms if necessary. Using conventional wiring, there'll be lots of wires running out in and out of this box to each of the individual lights or light banks. But because of CBUS, there are just four connections. The same is true for point switching. The same CBUS is used. The control panel outputs its data onto the CBUS and that travels along the bus to modules or nodes which then control the operation of the points. This particular layout uses connectors on the CBUS. Each CBUS node is attached by a plug and socket arrangement so it can be easily removed if needs be. Also near the bench there's another plug and socket so I can plug in an ex extension lead and work on the node on the bench. The C bus runs along the layout with nodes near to where the output is required. There's one in the signal box. It provides lighting for the signal box, the yard lamps, the hut and potentially four other lights or accessories. In its most basic form, CBUS just needs two nodes. I'm showing two here that I've used. One is the CAN-PAN and the CAN-AC-8. The CAN-PAN controls the lighting control panel and the CAN-AC-8 drives the lights. They're connected together by the four wires of the CBUS. Two of those are DC power, positive and negative, 12 volts, DC, stabilised. I use an old laptop power adapter for mine. It's got a capability of about two amps output, which is plenty for all I need to do. The other two wires are the actual data feeds of the data bus going between the two nodes. So there's no central heart to the network. It's simply a data bus that you hang different nodes on to give inputs and outputs to the data bus. Let's have a look at that lighting panel in a bit more detail. There it is with the covers off, the back of the switches you can see there on the left, and the box on the right. Inside the box is the CAN pan panel itself, uh, and the leads going out with the C bus out to the back of the box to the little connector that you saw earlier on. If we look at a bit more detail of that control panel, you'll see that it's got 24 switches. Those are arranged at the back in the form of a matrix. So as you can see we've got three rows and eight columns. The reason they're set up as a matrix is that it reduces the number of wires between the switches and the node. So if you look at the other end of those cables you'll see that they go into a big D-type connector which is connected to the CAN pan. The CAN pan itself has the normal requirements of any CBUS node and that is it's got our four leads going in, red and black, regulated 12 volts, blue and yellow are the data bus. Now for convention I've used CAN low as blue and CAN high is yellow and it's always important that you don't confuse those two, you have to use the same colours throughout otherwise one panel will get inverted signals won't understand it and it'll all go wrong. So do make sure that you get whatever colour code you decide to use that you stick to it throughout the network. All CBUS nodes have a decoder. The decoder is the interface between the data bus and its processor. So here we can see the decoder, the processor and then the rest of the circuit is the main components are 
the switch and LED connections, which you've already seen, an LED driver and a switch driver. The switch driver is driving the matrix up to the switches and the LED driver is supplying current out to the LEDs. So that's one node, one component part of our CBUS lighting network. The other part of it was the CAN ACK8 accessory driver. Now that's capable of driving eight outputs. So depending on what the information is that comes down the data bus, and that will go to the decoder. The decoder then feeds its signals to the processor, and the processor would drive the LEDs. But some LEDs and lamps need more current than the processor can supply. So we've incorporated an output driver, which is just eight Darlington pairs, eight high current supplies to go to the outputs. And those supply the socket on the far right of the board that you can see there. So that then is our first basic setup that we've used for lighting. The arrows there show which way the data is going. It shows that outputs from the panel go into the CAN pan. The CAN pan then feeds data out along the CBUS, the blue and yellow wires, into the CAN ARC8. And the CAN ARC8's job is to interpret those signals and light whichever lights we've told it need lighting. So a pretty straightforward system then. If we double that up, we can do something very, very similar using another CAN pan. This time, its switches are on a mimic panel. The mimic panel then controls the points. So pressing a button on the mimic panel through its matrix then gives us another signal out from that CAN pan onto the CBUS. Now, the instructions that are going along the CBUS go to every other node on the bus. But because of the way it's programmed and because of the way it's set up, the only thing that interprets that particular instruction is the CAN SOL. The CAN SOL is a solenoid driver for point motors. So by pressing buttons on the mimic panel, we can control up to eight point solenoids, so eight points, using the CAN SOL node. So the same process exactly, just using a different node to drive the points. Moving on from there, we can add another sort of node, which is the CAN MIO. Now, the way I've used the CAN MIO here is, as you can see by the direction of the arrows, is to drive even more lights on the layout. But the CAN MIO can be set up to have either outputs or inputs, which is what the IO stands for. It's either an input or output devices. And you could have a mix. Now the inputs to the CAN MIO might be something like a, a train on track detector that detects the position of a locomotive somewhere on the layout. The input on the CAN MIO then would feed data up to the CBUS and something would react to it. But in my case, it's set up to do eight outputs and drive eight lights. There's one final node that we're going to look at, and that is the CAN USB. This for me is the major link and the major benefit of using CBUS. In this it enables the computer to communicate with all the nodes on the bus. So ultimately that means you can drive the entire layout from your computer if you need to or if you want to. So you can set up the points, which switches operate the points, which switches operate the lights, uh, which direction the points go, whether the lights are on or off, whether they flash, all sorts of things you can change using the computer software that's provided for CBUS. On top of that, you can also drive your DCC system from the computer. So you could, if you wanted to, fully automate the entire layout. This double O gauge layout takes the C bus a step further and it has sensors to sense the presence of trains 
As the train approaches the station, it initiates an announcement from the station speakers. The train approaching platform 3 is the 9 o'clock service to Hackley, calling at Nossington Bassett, Coldwater and Austin in the Wold. And those small displays you can see are also triggered by the Seabus system.